please give a warm round of applause to Alonzo Bowden. Thank you, guys. Wow, what's up, DC? How you guys doing? You all right? You all good? Man, I rented a car and drove in DC for the first time. What's wrong with you people? What the hell is going on? I've never seen a city made up entirely of one-way streets that you're not allowed to turn on. You, you just get on one and hope that's the street you're supposed to be on. Cause you gotta keep going. And if you pass your destination, you have to go around the globe and come back and try again. It, it's unbelievable driving here. Like you make a wrong turn. Virginia, what the hell? How'd I get to Virginia? I just turned left. I, I walked back to Hertz and I told him the car is in Virginia because I don't know how to get it back here. I, and they said that's all right because they get them from Maryland. Now I understand why nothing gets done in Washington, D.C. I, I can. Oh, you know, they all have good intentions in D.C. They can just never get where they're going. They, it, it really. I mean, I travel all the time. I love this city. But I was in Vegas last week, and that, that was just strange. Being in Vegas at Christmas time, that's a weird thing going on because you watch people losing their kids' presents <laughs> at the crap table. The kid, kid's like, what am I getting for Christmas? Well, might be a PlayStation. Might be a candy cane. I don't know. Depends on this seven. If seven's coming, I I love Vegas because Vegas is where you lose your mind. There's no reality in Vegas. You do things there you would never do in real life. Las Vegas is the only town where it's reasonable to drink a three-foot margarita before breakfast. You're just walking around with a giant drink, having a good time. Then you have breakfast and go back and get like four feet of Mai Tai. You, you do too much of everything. They have a new special there. You can go to eight buffets in 24 hours for $45. Nobody can eat that much. You can't eat at eight buffets, but you're in Vegas, so you consider it a challenge. I lost all my money, but I'll eat it back. I, I'm going to break even on these eight buffets. I'll wear their ass out. I, Yeah, it's a great time. I love it, man. They, I know they still have pay phones in the lobby. I'm like, who's, who's on the pay phone? Like, yo, man, I lost all my money and my minutes. Send a prepaid card, something, help her. I did something this year just purely for the adventure. I went to Walmart on Black Friday because I'd never been shot. And I just wanted to see what that felt like. What the hell is going on at Walmart? And, and what is wrong with us as Americans? Why are we there? Have you, Walmart on Black Friday is a strange, it's like Shark Week meets the LA riots. It's people in a feeding frenzy with carts filled with televisions and yeah, and, and we're fighting over, we're shooting and stabbing people getting trampled at Walmart for cheap Chinese crap. You know, and, and here's the thing, we buy all this stuff at Walmart and our money goes to China, then the Chinese fly over here and they're shopping at Nordstrom. You don't see any Chinese people at Walmart. <laughs> They're like, man, my cousin in prison made that crap. I'm not buying. <laughs> We've lost our minds. That, that's what it is. Collectively, as Americans, I love my country, but we have lost our minds. I don't know when we held the meeting 
when we had the vote, when we all got together and said, you know what, screw it. From here on out, now nah, we don't even care. We'll just play along. Honestly, like, like, when did we develop a fascination with garbage? We love garbage. And I'm not talking about bad entertainment. I'm not talking about, like, honey boo-boo. I'm, you know, which is something in itself that needs to be studied. I'm, we literally watch garbage. There is a show called Hoarders. Yes, yeah, right? We've all seen it. And Hoarders is on TLC, and, and honestly, TLC's network motto should be, if you feel bad about yourself, just tune in to TLC. After two hours of TLC, you're like, I'm not doing so bad. I, my kid's not in rehab, and I don't weigh 865 pounds. I, I think I'm going to be all right. We watch the show Hoarders, and it's these people that accumulate so much garbage, they can't even walk through their house. They have to tunnel through their own house, and we watch it, and then the hoarder dies, and they take all of their crap, and they put it in storage, and we watch Storage Wars. <laughs> to see another group of crazy people bid on the unknown crap the hoarder left behind and then they pour through it looking for something worth money so they can take it to the Pawn Stars. <laughs> and we watch the Pawn Stars secretly hoping another hoarder will wander into the pawn shop, buy that crap, and start the cycle again. <laughs> it's absolute insanity. This fall, I was on a tour. I was, I was all over Canada. Right, and, and I wasn't in good Canada, you know. No, because there's good Canada, like places you've heard of, Toronto and Montreal and Vancouver. Now, I was in Canada, you know. I, I was in like Medicine Hat and, and Moose Jaw, and it got so bad I was looking forward to getting to Saskatoon, which is, it's, they call it the prairies. It's like the heartland of Canada. It's full of nature. I don't like nature. I think nature should be kept in parks and zoos where you can keep an eye on it. The minute you let nature run around loose, somebody's going to get hurt. What is wrong with people challenging nature? People still get eaten by bears. Every time I read the story of someone getting eaten by a bear, you know what I do? I laugh my ass off. Because you had no business being in a position a bear might eat you. Recently, in Denali National Park, a man was eaten by a grizzly bear. Do you know why? Because he wanted a close-up picture of a grizzly bear. The man walked up on a grizzly bear armed with a digital camera. I think we all know how that story is going to end. And this was the part that upset me. They killed the bear. Yeah, like the bear did something wrong. Are you kidding? As a grizzly bear, do you know what a great day it is when a human just walks up on you? You're a grizzly bear all your life. You've been hunting and foraging. You're standing in icy rivers trying to catch a slippery fish. And a human is just coming your way. You're yelling at the other grizzly. You Joe! Yo, get over it. God is serving humans. No, I'm not chasing him. He's coming to me. No gun. He's got a camera. But don't worry about how I know what a camera is. Get your ass over here. And they killed the bear. Why? If you're starving and a pizza just floats by... No crime has been committed. <laughs> so I'm traveling all over Canada. It was in the fall of this year, so I had to try to explain to Canadians our elections. And if you can imagine trying to make the United States presidential election make sense to adults, 
It was unbelievable. I'm literally trying to explain to them why our presidential candidates are sitting there debating whether or not to kill Big Bird. <laughs> and you can't make that make sense. You, you see, Big Bird is important. He's, the kids love Big And you, you know something? I'll shoot you. I'm an American. I'll kill you right now. At this election, honestly, this was the one where they just need to say, all right, we're never going to let this happen again. It's, it was the most ridiculous thing. I, I always thought that there was like a test or something to be president, but apparently you just show up and they're like, hey, what the hell? Take a shot. You know? The Republican primary turned into a reality show. It literally was a reality show because just like any reality show, the craziest son of bitch would move to the top and then we'd vote him off the island. I've never seen such a cast of characters. It started with Michelle Bachman, possibly the angriest person I've ever seen. How can you want to be president and hate every group of Americans? It didn't matter. Black, Latino, gays, women. She was ah. That literally was a Bachman campaign speech. She, she came out. Ah, ah, ah. And we voted her off the aisle. And then we found Rick Perry. And Rick Perry had a three-point plan to save America. Unfortunately, he forgot the third point. He stood up there and said, we are going to cut commerce, and we are going to cut education, and we are going to cut uh, the, uh, the... If you don't remember the third one, the second one should not be education. And we voted him off the island. And they brought us Herman Cain. Herman Cain, it was as if the comedy gods looked down and said to all of us comics, relax, I got this one. You guys just take the month off. Huh? Herman Cain is the most fascinating candidate I've ever seen on any level, from school board to king of the world. They, I, I, I've never seen anything like, first of all, Herman Cain was a black conservative, and those aren't real. It, it's like a hobbit. Even, even if you see it, you know it doesn't exist. You, you can't be a black conservative. The words don't go together, because what, what a conservative is always talking about, this is America. This is America. Bring back the good old days. You're black. When were the good old days? I promise you, you will never see a group of black people sitting around reminiscing. <laughs> Looking back, oh man, remember the back of the bus. Oh, there was always a seat in the back of the bus. Remember the dogs? We were light on our feet when they had dogs. Had to keep moving when they had the dogs. Remember the fire hose? Never broke a sweat when they had the fire hose. I loved, I loved Herman Cain simply because Herman Cain stuck to his story. When that... When that sexual harassment thing came up, Herman didn't care. They had evidence and transcripts and witnesses. He, it was like, you, you ever have a little kid lie to you, but they stick to the lie to the point you start questioning the reality. You're like, because Herman came, he didn't care. He, whatever they had, he, he had the same thing. He was like, I don't know, I don't remember. I don't remember, I don't know. I don't know what I don't remember. I don't remember what I don't know. I was watching TV, I was like, maybe he don't know. 
maybe he don't remember. And, and I might have believed him, except they paid a settlement. They, they, they actually paid out money. Now, I might forget a woman I hit on. I might forget a woman I groped. I might forget the time my hand fell up your skirt. I ain't never gonna forget a woman cost me $80,000. I will spot her. Oh, they're gonna miss 80 grand right there. Who, the, who let her in here? What's... And we voted him off the island. Then they brought in outside crazies just to entertain us. Clint Eastwood got into an argument with an empty chair. He argued with an empty chair and lost. It was, I thought he was just gonna take out a 44 Magnum and blow the chair away, but. Sarah Palin just, just wouldn't get involved directly. She liked to, to heckle from the cheap seats. Sarah Palin said, Barack Obama is the most divisive president in history. He wants to take the nation back to a time before the Civil War. Now, I don't know Barack Obama personally, all right? I, I can't speak for what goes through the man's head, but I think it's pretty safe to say there ain't a brother in the world <laughs> looking to go back to a time before the Civil War. I think at that point, even Clarence Thomas is like, slow down now, let's. Let's not get crazy with this time machine. We... <laughs> Mitt Romney was the eventual Republican candidate, not because he won, merely because he survived. He was, he was the only one left. And Mitt Romney changed his mind so many times, I thought he was one of the undecided voters. I, like Mitt's not sure he wants to vote for himself. Huh? I think the pivotal moment in the election was the first debate, and, and if there's any doubt, yeah, I voted for Barack Obama. I, I voted for Barack Obama because he's black. That's not really the reason, but he had me at black. I, I ain't gonna lie, he ain't have to do a lot of campaigning with me. I, I, I'm with you on this, brother. With him. But the first debate was when I think it all changed because we all saw it and Barack Obama showed up and he looked like a kid who hadn't done his homework and got called on. Barack was looking for answers everywhere. He was looking down, he looking to the side, he was looking at his, oh man, these questions are hard. What the, I, I should have done the homework. But that made the difference because that night, you know he went home. Yeah, that's right. That's right, you know Michelle gave him a talking to. You know Michelle Obama don't play. Michelle was like, look, I done decorated this house. All right, my kids are in school. Now you get your ass out there and find a way to be president. Right. He went out on that next debate, he looked at Mitt Romney, he was like, don't take this ass whipping personal. Uh. Barack Obama won, and, and he, the great thing, the great thing about this election was it showed America has changed, right? The, the era of the old white man is done. You know, Barack Obama won with every other group. Barack Obama won with black people, Latinos, Asians, gays, women. Basically, Barack Obama got the vote of everyone not allowed in the country club. <laughs> Barack was like, if they don't let you play golf, come on over. <laughs> and you could see it, you could see the rallies. When Barack Obama had a rally, it looked like the audience in his club. It was, it was just a mixture of people, when, when Mitt Romney spoke, that crowd was white. <laughs> like that crowd was so white, even the Klan was like, damn, that's white. Why? 
We can't get that many together. How you do that? Huh? I don't understand Condoleezza Rice. I respect Condoleezza Rice. She's very intelligent and very accomplished. I don't understand her, but I know there has to be times when she gets tired of being the black Republican. You know what I mean? Whenever they need a black Republican, they just call Condi. She, she got to give speeches. She got to make appearances. They needed a woman at Augusta at the, at the golf course where they have the masters. They're like, get Condi. She black and a woman. That counts for two. And I respect that, but if I were her, I'd mess with them. Like at Augusta, I'd start inviting black people to play golf. But you mess with them, right? Like first you invite Oprah and Denzel, right? Because they're the good ones. You know. No one get upset. They let Denzel play golf. You know. Then you, you mess with them a little. You invite Jay-Z, right? He confuses them, right? Because he's a rapper, but he's a $400 million businessman who's married to Beyonce. They're like, all right, he can come, but he got to bring Beyonce. <laughs> and then when they ain't looking, Flavor Flav! Yeah. You know Flav going to roll in with his own barbecue grill. And, <laughs> and then, then right after the election, right after the election, people start just losing their minds, right? States threaten to secede. Right? <laughs> Texas and Mississippi and Alabama like we'll secede from the Union. I'm like go Don't let us hold you back. What do you Alabama wants to leave that's like your 40 year old unemployed son threatening to leave the basement Well kid, I don't know how we gonna get by without you but Somehow we'll have to muddle through. And now it's just back to the same old thing, right? Now it's the fiscal cliff. We're going to go over the fiscal cliff. And it's nonsense. It's, it get pissed off. It's the same thing. The fiscal cliff comes from the debt ceiling because when that happened, there was no solution. They just said, well, let's push it off another year and a half, you know, and they, and they love to blame Barack Obama. After the debt ceiling, they lowered America's credit rating and blamed Barack Obama. Like you're going to scare a black man with a lowered credit rating. Uh, bad credit, that's all you got? Every brother in here got a cousin with good credit. <laughs> America changed this election day. Washington State and Colorado legalized marijuana. Right? Yeah. Legalized marijuana. Two weeks later, hostess went bankrupt. No more Twinkies. <laughs> the Lord giveth. That's just harsh right there. You're like, well, come on, God, you're going to give us weed and take away the Twinkies? That, that ain't right. <laughs>